And what's going on, you guys? What is going on? What is going on, y'all? This will be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. And we're here for my live review of the last part of the Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8 reunion. What is going on, you guys? I hope you guys have had a wonderful Monday morning, and I intend on doing the exact same. Now, before we even get into this damn review, I just want y'all to know I already know that Candace is pregnant. I don't need nobody filling my chat up with Candace is pregnant. Do you know Candace is pregnant? Do I already know. I know. I know. I know. After this video was over with, I will be doing um another video to talk about her pregnancy. But right now, this is all about this damn reunion. So I already know she's pregnant. I literally just found out not too long ago. So after this review, after I do this review, be on the lookout for another video to come out. All right. So uh, with that being said, y'all, wait a minute. Let me open up this door. Shit right there. Let me open up this door because it's hot in here and all that. And plus, I got to clean up my room. I just got here uh, today. I mean, yesterday. So, yeah. But anyways, um, before we get into anything, um, let's talk about what we got coming up today. Now, y'all know that every Monday is the Whether You Like It or Not panel. Y'all know it's every Monday. And tonight is our last episode for a while. So make sure you guys tune in. All five of us will be in attendance. Um, I know Busy will be there. Schoolboy will be there to close it out. And I think L. Teddy will too. So make sure you guys tune in with the five, with the main five and our three special guests of the, of the whole time. All right. So make sure you guys get into that. Cause you know, we'll be over on Sakina's page. Sakina already got the link mm -hmm. already made and put together already. So, um, we will um get into that um later on tonight tonight and it will be at 8 15 p.m eastern time so make sure you guys tune in let me turn this thing all right so we're gonna get into that tonight at 8 15 p.m eastern time and yes that's pretty much all that we got for the church announcements. So we're going to go ahead and get into this review because I know y'all been waiting on me. Y'all know I was in the air <laughs> while this shit was on last night. And I just got through watching it on Peacock, okay? So let's go ahead and get into the get down of it all. Let me get my notes because my notes are on my phone. So we're going to go ahead and get into it, honey, okay? So we pick up what we left off last week, okay? We pick up what we left off last week with um, Gordon and Mia. Gordon reveals that he has that he was diagnosed with bipolar one. He was explaining the difference between, you know, actual bipolar and bipolar one. And then there's bipolar two and three. Like, I didn't even know that there was like a bipolar one or a bipolar two. I just really thought that it was like if you got diagnosed with bipolar, it was a matter of fact, you got you got diagnosed with just straight up bipolar. I didn't know there was like a number to it. You know what I'm saying? I never knew that. But then again, you sometimes you don't really know things like that, you know, at first, because I didn't know there was a flu A, a flu B. I didn't know none of that until I got diagnosed with flu B <laughs> when I got sick a couple of years back. So yeah, that's 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 pretty much just that. Um, he was talking about his manic episodes, and to be honest, he said before he got diagnosed, he feels like he already been um bipolar for a long time because he would have those episodes all the time but nobody would ever know what it was you know what i mean so he feels like he's already had bipolar for a long time or, or whatnot um when andy brought up him locking mia in a room he didn't necessarily recall that mia um that he had locked mia in a room you know what i'm saying he didn't recall that but he said that a lot of the times when you are going through um your manic episodes you know what i'm saying you really don't you really tend to not remember some of the things that actually happened when you were in those moments or in those spaces so um it was pretty interesting. You know, I never would have thought that um, he had, you know, bipolar depression, never would have thought that at all. So that was kind of interesting, um, to say the least. Um, <laughs> I can't stand him. I can't stand him. I can't stand him. I can't stand him. Um, however... So, um, when it comes down to it, some people feel like 
this story ain't true. Some people feel like he lying. Some people feel like this is just a storyline to keep, you know, me on that damn show. That's what other people are saying. I don't want to believe that somebody's lying about mental health. I y'all know that I'm a big advocate for mental health. I talk about my 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 own experiences with depression and things like that. So I really don't want to put that out there that he's lying because I don't know if he's lying or not. But being that, you know, Mia has been caught in so many lies, and I'm pretty sure that um that G was in on some of the lies that she has told, it wouldn't be a surprise that he probably lied about it. But I don't want to be the one to say that there's a lie being told. I just don't. I just don't. I don't. I really don't. <laughs> I don't want to be the one to say that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that when we get on the panel tonight, be, judging by T's remarks, I'm sure that somebody up there going to say that he lame. But I ain't going to say he lame because I don't. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. Um, but you do, but I do know that some people deal with bipolar in a different way. Some people deal with have bipolar disorder and they talk about it in different ways. I mean, my cousin Reggie deals with bipolar disorder. And the only reason why I'm saying it here because he said it publicly already. So that's the only reason why I'm saying it here. So some of those actions that that G described, I've seen those before. So that's why I'm not really too quick to say that he lying or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I hope that he ain't lying. But, you know, these people do be lying, you know. So who knows? Shout out to the 200 people that's already in the building. And one thing and another thing about it is if you are brand new to the platform, go on ahead and subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and subscribe. The, the numbers are going up at this point. We're going back up. We're going back up, okay? Uh, well, make sure you guys uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, Gordon says that he does believe that Mia had an affair during the marriage, but it wasn't throughout the marriage. Um, let's see. Um, Mia says that she's always going to look out for Gordon. Um, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what their relationship is, she's always going to be there for Gordon. I was going to look out for him. I was going to make sure he's okay. I mean, I guess that's a good thing being that he is, you know, uh, the father of her children, but that's probably one of the things that's making people feel like it's a possibility that they ass could be lying about this whole thing because you got a man, but you still caretaking your soon to be ex-husband. You know what I'm saying? Like what man would be okay with you doing that? I ain't never been nobody's caregiver. I don't know how this shit works. I mean, I really don't know. Don't understand. Don't know. I'm just telling y'all why people may look like, may be looking at this shit like it's a whole lie. Because it do sound like a lie. Okay, it do. But I don't want to say that. Because I don't want to believe that anybody's lying about their mental health. I don't. I'm just being honest with y'all. So, next thing you know, um... They asked what's Gordon's relationship is with Mia's new man, Ink. He said that he's very cordial with Ink at this particular point. Like, he's cordial. He ain't got no problems with Ink. Okay. I guess that's a good thing. Um, then, also, they asked him about his relationship with his family. He says that the relationship with him and his family is great. Um, he still got his shares to the company. They just knocked him off the CEO thing. So, him and his family are great. Okay. So I guess that was the closing to Mia in, in Gordon's story and all that other stuff. So we get into NECA, which we haven't heard from her for most of the damn for most of the damn reunion. She's been sitting there quiet as a church mouse, but she's tried to, you know, engage and, you know, insert her opinion somewhere on this damn reunion. She's tried, but not, try, not hard enough. She says that the I think it's the um, INOU or something like that that she had didn't take. So now she's on the idea of journey to have a baby. And I'm really hoping that Nika does get what she wants. And that's the, and that's to have a baby because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of women, I, it's hard to watch women that's in their 30s. You know what I mean? Struggle to have a kid. And we be seeing all these women that be getting pregnant so quickly and don't even want these fucking kids. And you see women that actually want kids that's having a hard time having a child. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to watch in a sense. You feel what I'm saying? But, you know, like I said, no matter how I feel about NECA, I don't care for NECA at all. But I really do hope that she gets what she wants and that is a child. Um, so then they asked 
um, Karen, you know, um, about the whole North Potomac situation and things like that. And so, um, Karen says that there's a difference between North and North Potomac. And then they said, uh, Ray, what part of Potomac do y'all live? And Ray said, we live in central part of Potomac. And then that's when Karen was like, okay, you better let them know. And I'm like, does it really matter? But okay, girl. So then, um, as they get the little fluff out the way, Andy then starts saying that the Shrine story was one story that they wish that they never told. That's one story that they wish they never told, right? And um, they said leading into the season, they did not know anything about this real life situation that was going on between, you know, Wendy and the girls or whatever. And she, they didn't know anything about the Shrine stuff until filming had started. They didn't know anything before that. Andy says that production originally wanted Wendy to um, bring NECA on the show. And Andy says that Wendy was not too happy about them asking her to bring in NECA to the show, right? Wendy said, it wasn't that I wasn't happy about, you know, um, NECA coming on this show. They said that we got somebody. We got somebody. We want to bring them on the show through you, you know, whatever. Do you know them? Wendy said, I really don't know her. You know, I don't know her. And so when it came down to it, Nika said that um, I met Wendy. I've had a conversation with Wendy. I said all of those things because they actually happened. So Wendy said, so you did say that you knew me. And then Nika was like, are you are you hard of hearing? Are you hard of hearing or whatever? Do, are you hard of hearing? Um, do you ever listen or whatever? And then Wendy was like, are you are you angry? Like, why are you so aggressive? Why are you? Well, she didn't say aggressive, but she said, why are you so hostile? I'm not being hostile with you. And then Nekka said, well, you've been lying the whole season. You've been lying the whole reunion or whatever. And so it was kind of like, OK, you know, they're going back and forth about the words. No. Now, what I get from this is that Wendy, in my opinion, Wendy wanted Kiana on the show because that's what she knew. That's what she wanted on the show. And on top of that, Kiana has another history with somebody else on the show besides Wendy. She knows Giselle because she's friends with Giselle's tacky ass hairstylist. So that is the, so that's another reason why she could be on the show. It's kind of organic. They kind of know each other, whatever. She felt like she didn't know NECA at all. NECA said that, you know, she met Wendy at a concert, they was in VIP, it was maybe like 10 to, tw 10 to 20 people up in there or whatever. That's And she, they had a conversation. So that's what she told them. But Wendy says, I don't know NECA. And honestly, let's be real. The word no is ambiguous at this point. You know, like people says no, I know a person in a different way, right? Okay, say for instance, Tammy Talks. I know Tammy Talks. I've worked with Tammy Talks before, but I don't know her. You know what I mean? Because we haven't met, you know, we haven't hung out or anything like that. We ain't talked on the phone. It's been pretty much, you know, a respect thing, mainly, you know, a little surface, you know, like she's watched my videos in the past and stuff like that. I've worked with her. We, we communicate, um, on social media, I'm even finna work with her on who was wrong. She's one of the people that's gonna work with me, by the way. So, yes, I know Tammy, I know of Tammy Talks because we work together and we're both YouTube colleagues, but we don't know each other. Now, Mims, I know Mims. We hang out, we have each other's numbers, we talk all the time. I know Mims, okay? Another situation. Let me use somebody else, okay? Who else can I use? I know Erica De Niro. Well, I know of Erica De Niro. We've worked together on Who Was Wrong. We did a panel together. We're YouTube colleagues. We know each other through the YouTube sphere, but we've never met. We never hung out. We never, you know, had each other's numbers. So we don't really know each other like that. But I know of Erica. On the flip side, Jamie. I know Jamie. We hang out. We got each other's numbers. I've been to her baby shower. She's been to my birthday party, birthday dinner. So we know each other. But me and Erica know of each other. Me and Tammy know of each other because we work together. So there's a difference between knowing each other and knowing of each other. But 
according to Andy, you know, sometimes people can say, you know, well, I met this person one time or we had a conversation one time and in their minds as production okay well that's good enough to say i know this person or that's good enough to be like well you know i can we can bring you on the show because y'all knew each other at some point in time but it's kind of like the same thing and there go busy he just put it in a he just put it in a in a chat there's um i was just about to say that before he before i saw that but there's another thing where wendy was kind of upset at karen on her first season because she was on the board with Karen and Karen was going around saying that Karen didn't, you know, Karen said she didn't know Wendy and Wendy felt some kind of way about, you know, Karen saying that she didn't know her when they was on the board together. But just because you're on the board with somebody that don't mean that they know you. Like I go to the barbershop every Thursday and I see these guys, some of these same guys at the barbershop, you know what I'm saying? Every Thursday, I don't know them niggas. I know of them because I see them at the barbershop and we go to the same barber, but I don't know them niggas. Like, I, I can't tell you shit about them. I just know we went to the same barbershop. I know of them. That's just that on that. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty much the same situation. Wendy knew of Karen because she was on a board with Karen. NECA knew of Wendy because they met one time. They had one conversation. And I think the family's kind of intertwined. I think LeBay, who is Ike's cousin, is friends with Wendy's sister. So it's one of those I know of, but I don't know type of situations. It's an ambiguous thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I take from the situation. Do y'all get what I'm trying to say? But this is not, this is in no way of me trying to make any excuses for Wendy because I got a lot of heat for Wendy in this particular interview or whatever. I mean, this particular review because there are some things that she wasn't completely honest about, in my opinion. But to be honest, I do think that that's what that is. It's two different situations. Wendy was gaslighting and lying, and Wendy was also mad when Karen, which I just said. Okay. <laughs> So um, that's just that's one of those situations. It's just like even with the YouTuber Harviana, who I just met over the weekend in Houston, we know we don't really know each other, but we know of each other and we cool. But I, we don't know each other. But I think that I could say that I know him enough to say if I was on a on a reality show with him, I could introduce him into the fold because I've been around him. I've been on this platform before. It's a little different. Me and Busy consider each other friends. We haven't met yet, but I got this man's number. I've talked to him personally. Um, he's reached out to me during a lot of, you know, hard times and stuff like that. So I know Busy, but there's certain people that I just know of, but don't know them. You know what I'm saying? So that's the difference. Um, some of y'all think that it's not the same, but I'm I, I, okay. But I still don't think that Wendy knew Nika. But I think it's the same thing as Karen not knowing Wendy. It's the same situation. Um, Nika said that Married to Medicine wanted her first. But, you know, LeBay said that she got a, um, she got like this friend that, well, another African, uh, not African, another Nigerian sister that's on Potomac. Y'all should get to know each other. That's what it was. So they asked Wendy about Osu. And then, you know, uh, Wendy was like, well, since Ashley brought it to the show, maybe she can tell y'all what Osu means. So Ashley says that she doesn't know what it means. She really didn't know what it was or what it means or whatever. And then she also said that Ashley, you know, Ashley said that it was brought to her attention, you know, before meeting NECA or whatever. And then they were saying that um, Ashley, uh, Wendy was like, the thing is, you never should have brought it up if you knew that it was a negative consultation. And then that's when... Um, and it was like, is it a bad thing? And then that's when um, Nick was Nick and Ike was like, it's taboo. We don't talk about it. And then uh, Wendy says, uh, Nick says, nobody has really the range to really discuss that. And I'm very uncomfortable even talking about what it actually means. So I'd rather not even go into it. And then um, that's when Wendy said, nobody should be talking about it. it. If Ashley knew how taboo it was, she wouldn't be talking about it. And um, Ashley says, okay, but I'm not to blame for what happened after the fact. And I feel like, yes, you are to blame because you're the one who brought this shit to the forefront in the first place. Because I just feel like if you never would have said that to NECA, 
or Wendy or any any one of them, if you never would have told Wendy that, it wouldn't even be no situation right now. You know what I'm saying? I do feel like Ashley played a big part in that, but I also feel like Wendy never really held Ashley accountable for that either. I think that she held NECA accountable for because NECA took it and ran with it and made it into a whole damn storyline. I think that's why she pretty much placed all of the blame on NECA. But I do think that y'all allow Ashley to get away with so much shit. And she really is, she's clearly the one that be starring a lot of this shit. But y'all don't be saying nothing about that. Y'all just let her have it, let her make it, and all this other shit. And y'all need to stop letting Ashley do that. Because if it wasn't for Ashley, you know, y'all wouldn't even be in this situation. So instead of y'all trying to hold each other accountable, y'all need to be holding her Stewie looking ass accountable for what the fuck happened. Like, I don't, I feel like Ashley got off scot-free in this whole situation when she shouldn't have gotten off scot-free at all in this whole situation. She shouldn't have, period. She shouldn't have gotten off scot-free with this because she started this shit. She carried that shit and she kept it going and NECA kept it going. And the thing is, Wendy and NECA both look foolish. This is another situation where one of them other motherfuckers then put two folks against each other, have y'all going at it all season when it was them that caused the shit and y'all done fell out with each other and y'all ain't even, y'all ain't even able to be cool like that because of them. It's the same situation that Giselle and Ashley did. They cooked up that shit between Candace and Monique, then they get the fighting, and then them two at it, and they will never be cool again because, you know, they got into a brawl. It's the same thing here. Ashley played them two against each other, and they're both too stupid to realize that they were played, but, they, but they're but they mad at one another. Stupid as fuck. Okay, stupid as hell. I, and, and that's another thing that I don't understand about Candace and Wendy is that they always are able to be cool with Ashley, knowing that Ashley is probably the messiest motherfucker on this damn show. And she gets the shit going. But y'all be having so much heat for Giselle, which she deserves the heat. But why y'all don't never have that same energy for Ashley, though? I feel like Ashley should be in that same boat with Giselle. Am I am I crazy? Am I crazy here? Can somebody tell me am I crazy or not? Because I just feel like Ashley likes these matches all the time and let it blow up and and set the shit on fire. Everybody puts the fire out, but don't realize that Ashley was the one with the match or the lighter. Giselle gets all the heat though. As I said, she deserves that. But Ashley deserves the same amount as Giselle do, in my opinion. That's what I think. I just want to know if I'm crazy. Um, What else is here? So then, after that, they ask Wendy, what does she need from NECA? Wendy says she needs nothing from NECA. She says her and NECA can take accountability and move forward. Then NECA was saying that Ashley had lied about this whole situation and she refuses to take any accountability for the part that she played in this whole beef between the two of them. And she says that Wendy had no energy for Ashley and that Wendy tried to pretty much ice her out of the group. Number one, I will agree with NECA when she says that Wendy did not have any energy for Ashley because she did not have any energy for Ashley. Ashley was the one who brought the bone in the first place. Ashley, the one who kicked this shit off in the first place and played the both of y'all against each other, which is what they always do. Y'all always do that. Y'all want to, they play like they play, you know, Candace and Monique against each other. They play in Wendy and Nick against each other. And to be quite honest though, they kind of play Sharice and Monique against each other. 
in my opinion, because they were fine before Robin and Giselle got involved in the situation and saying that, oh, uh, Monique is using your contacts and she's using your 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 connections and she using this and she using that as if this motherfucker wasn't married to no football player who had connects of his own. So I think they played a part in Sharice and Monique falling apart, to be honest. They always do that. And another thing, now the second part that I don't agree with is that how the fuck you going to say that Wendy trying to ice you out the group when her ass is iced out by at least three or four people on the damn cast. Let's be real. Wendy don't have the power to ice nobody out no fucking group when she's iced out herself. She's on the island with Candace. How the fuck can she ice you out of anything? That's the part that don't make sense to me. That's the part that don't make any sense to me. How the hell are you going to say she tried to ice me out? She tried to ice me out. She iced out. So how the fuck she icing you out? Make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, make this shit make sense. When it comes down to Wendy and Necka, honestly, though, they're both idiots. They're both idiots. In my eyes, honestly, both idiots, because they allow these people to, to to play them against each other when they could have been good friends. They allowed them to do that. And now they look crazy. Oh, one looks like a lie. The other one looks like she lying to uh, one look like she thirsty for cloud. It looks crazy. And then not to mention with Wendy. You know, house being burglarized, people are blaming NECA for it on Twitter. It's just ridiculous. Now, I ain't saying NECA had anything to do with it because I really don't believe that NECA would go that far to do that. But someone was saying that uh, NECA's, um, one of NECA's quote-unquote bots had done it, but I don't really believe that. But I just feel like Wendy really didn't do anything to NECA, to be honest. She really didn't do nothing to NECA like that for to for the situation to be where it is. But I do think that they both kind of played into this damn scheme that Ashley set up and they fell right into that damn fly trap, to be honest. That's how I feel. They both look crazy right now. Um, let's see. So Kiana comes out. And then they ask her what was her experience leading up to this fight that she was involved in. She said, overall, she had a good experience with the ladies. You know, she explained her friendship with Wendy and then, you know, she explained her relationship with Cal and that's how she knew Giselle or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kiana said that she loves everybody in the group. You know, like pretty much she don't have a problem with nobody in this group. And I don't expect her to have no problem with everybody in this group because everybody has not done anything to her. So just because she came into this group as Wendy's friend, that really don't mean that she got to, you know, got to be, you know, against, you know, anything. That mean, that don't mean she got to be against the rest of the girls just because her friend is. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to have power to ice someone out, just need to cause doubt. But she don't have the power to cause doubt for anything. I don't know if you got what I'm saying, but she's not in a space to cause doubt for nobody. Who's listening to Wendy in that group? Let's be for real. If she ain't got the power to ice nobody out, she ain't got the power to cause doubt either. They don't fuck with Wendy. They don't like Wendy. They don't take nothing she say seriously. So how can she cause doubt? She can't. They don't listen to her. They're not going to take her word for shit. Um, Wendy explained the room, the room thing. Hold on, y'all. Excuse me. Um, Wendy explained the room thing. She said that they all knew that they were going to have separate room so why on earth would she want to share a room with kiana i don't think y'all all knew that y'all was gonna get wendy honestly i don't really believe y'all all knew that before y'all came on this trip y'all didn't know that until after the fact so don't play on nobody's intelligence wendy because no you specifically said oh, i'm not sharing a room with kiana you didn't want to share a room with kiana because she was sick and then um after that 
what happened after that. So then um, Kiana Dean says that it did bother her that nobody checked on her and that Giselle was the only one that did. So then uh, Candace says that Giselle was being strate strategic and trying to look out for Kiana. She doesn't feel like um, Kiana, she don't feel like Giselle was um, really that concerned about Kiana. She only did that to make Candace and Wendy look like bad friends. So Giselle feels like that's crazy. They're giving her way too much power. Honestly, in my opinion, I felt the same way when I first saw that. Although I felt like it was dog the fuck out that Candace and Wendy are supposed to be Key Ernest's friend. And they're not going in to check on her. Got her fighting for her life by herself. And y'all op going up in there to check on her. It was a bad look, honestly. To be honest, it was a bad look. It didn't look too good for her to be doing that. It just did. It just did not look good for Karen, for Giselle to be the one to be looking out for Kiana. You know what I mean? So it, it can easily look like, oh, these hoes ain't her friends. You know, it can be easily looked at that way. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But I also felt like Giselle was being very strategic when she decided to look after Kiana, in my opinion. That's just the type of chick that I think she is. Wendy started talking about the talk show that she's doing and how much it was for her to put it together. Then she said that she's giving up, you know, teaching for a minute. You know, her kids are growing up. She's been missing a whole lot of, you know, moments in their lives and she doesn't want to miss anything. So she's done with that right now. She says that her being Catholic is nothing new. She's being Catholic. This ain't new. Um, they start talking about Wendy calling Mia slow and stuff like that. And, um, you know, Mia felt like that was really, you know, fucked up. There's people that got mental issues that we shouldn't be using the word slow, honestly. Um, I don't be thinking that people, honestly, this is just my opinion. I don't, when people say somebody's slow, I don't be thinking that they're calling them slow to say that they're like, you know, mentally unavailable. I feel like they're calling you slow because you dumb as hell. That's what I be taking from that. And that's not really that good either. But when I call somebody slow, I ain't saying you slow because you mental, your mental. I'm, I'm calling you slow because you dumb. And you ain't got it all. But that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help either. So, yeah. The, yeah. So, I get it. Um, Wendy apologizes to NECA. And then um, Mia said that she called. Wendy called her a liar. But Mia said. But Wendy was like, but you do be lying. And Mia do be lying. So, how the fuck is you feeling any kind of way about somebody calling you what you are? Which is a fucking liar. You know what I'm saying? So... Then Ashley, she said that she got a friend that ain't her man, but she got a friend. Okay, girl. Uh, she said that she's going through a toxic cycle with Mike. You know, one minute they are able to coexist, you know, be cool, you know, um, be great parents to the kids. But then they turn around and then they're not able to do that. And then when the filming of the show starts, they're back at odds. But then when the filming is not going on, they're no longer at odds. And as they tape in the reunion, they were back at odds again. So it's like a toxic cycle and is now to the point to where she has filed a complaint. She says that she's looking to get um, a sizable amount of money out of the divorce. And she feels like Michael would be there for the children after the divorce is over, not necessarily her. I don't believe that she really wants no divorce. I really believe that she's only doing this for the public because the public been dragging her every which way for the longest time, you know, about her being married to a pervert. So I don't really believe that she want to get that shit up. She don't want to give up the money. She don't want to give up none of that, in my opinion. That's how I feel. Um, Let's see. She said she put her dreams of being um, a broad, being in broadcasting on the back burner because she wanted to be with Michael. She said that when she met Michael, she was in school. She went to school for journalism. She wanted to, well, broadcast and she wanted to be a news broadcaster. Um, Michael said he wanted to travel everywhere. And um, with her working a nine to five, they won't be able to travel everywhere. So that is the reason why um, she, you know, stayed down with Michael, didn't get no job, just was his you know, stay at home wife, I guess. Um, let me see. So then 
they started talking about Giselle and Ashley working together on that GNA line. And um, they say they work well together. Um, Giselle speak on the differences of working with Ashley and Robin. Um, she says that Ashley will will blow out the of uh, the budget, but Robin gonna go by every little cent, every cent. She knows exactly what's in that account for the Reason Blue Shady podcast, so she knows exactly what's going down with that. So it's a difference with working on the both of them. Um, the girls give their opinions on the fashion line. Um, they weren't the necess they weren't necessarily the most positive opinions on the fashion line, but I digress. Um, Kiana says, so we get into the fight part this is the fight package kiana says that when it came down to the fight she was trying to de-escalate the situation wendy initially tried to de-escalate the situation because they all felt like they all they knew was that deborah was getting in candace's face so they were trying to de-escalate it the problem that i got with this is that i see people on twitter that's blaming Key Erna for this whole situation, saying that she involved herself. No, she did not involve herself. She was trying to keep them from fighting. You don't want to see them fight. So you stand, okay, y'all, let's let's break this up, you know, whatever. Now, sometimes people be like, you don't need to break up no fight because you'll wind up getting hurt trying to break somebody up or whatever. And I get that part, but they weren't even fighting yet. Like they saw Deborah trail her ass over there to Candace and she knew. They knew that she came up there to fight. They knew it. So that's why they stood in between and was trying to de-escalate it. Um, Kiana says, um, they, Andy was like, she threw a drink in your face. And what, what was going through your mind when you did that? She was like, what was going through my mind when I got a drink thrown in my face was, you know, I decided to defend myself. That's why, that's why I was throwing hands because she threw a drink on me. And to be honest, that is defending yourself. Once you throw a drink on somebody, that's assault. You got every right to defend yourself however the fuck you want to. If somebody threw a drink in my face, I'm going to try. I don't care if I'm going to lose the fight or not. You throw a drink at me, I'm going to throw my fist at you. You know what I'm saying? Once you, once you do that, you have already went beyond measure at this point. You've assaulted me by throwing this drink on me. You violated me. So now it's time for me to violate your ass in the same way. So I don't see why anybody feels like Kiana was wrong for laying hands on Deborah. She was not wrong for shit. Deborah had no business going over there fucking with them folks in the first place. That's on period. Um, Candace says Deborah came out of nowhere. She said we was all over there dancing. We was all over there having a good time. She bean lined her ass over there to Candace talking about, do you have, do you got a problem with me? Do we have something that we want to talk about? And once I said no, she should have went away. And that is the truth. That is the truth. She should have just left the girl alone. If the girl don't want to talk to you, go away. You coming over there starting shit, leave the girl alone. She don't want to fucking talk to you. Like she doesn't want to talk to you. And then Mia said, let me just come in and say this. Deborah approached me too. And she felt some type of way about what I said in my confessional when I said that she's a four. Like she's a cute girl, but she's a four. She approached me about it and she said, so do you think that I'm a four? Do you think that I'm a four? Do you think I'm a four? And then, you know, Deborah, I mean, Mia was like, no, 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 no. I think you're beautiful, whatever. And she said, I told her that because I just I just feel like you should be mindful of your actions because you don't really, when you got much more to lose, because in my situation, I could have, if I would have just told her, yeah, I, that's what I think then at the end of the day, she probably would have tried to fight me too. I just think this, Mia is the wrong person to give Candace any type of advice on how to handle conflict because you are the same person that threw a drink on Wendy when Wendy didn't even do nothing to you. You picked the fight with her just last season, throwing drinks and hitting her with purses. So the irony of you trying to tell somebody how if they got too much to lose, they should react this way. Or when you got a lot to lose, then you shouldn't even be acting like that. No, the fact of the matter was, you was too much of a pussy to stand up for what the fuck you said. You said that she was a four. You said that shit on camera. She approached you about it and your ass got quiet and you was quiet as a church mouse and you got scared because you thought that she was going to whoop your ass because she was strong looking. That's why you did that. It ain't got nothing to do with somebody having too much to lose. You was just too pussy to own up to your shit. 
If you said it, you said it. You said it. Like you was just being a pussy. That's 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 just what it is. It ain't about handling things differently because we got too much to lose. Did you have a lot to lose last year when you threw a drink on Wendy? Did you have anything to lose when you hit her with a purse? Okay, you're not the right messenger. Shut the fuck up. You always running out. Every time we get to the reunion, you be having so much to say. Well, you ain't no damn better. So shut the fuck up, Mia. Honestly. Honestly, like for real, like it be so funny how these people that have done things and said shit want to lecture her about what the fuck she's saying. It's crazy to me. It's so weird. Anyway, um, so then Giselle, Giselle says that everybody's responsible. She says Deborah is responsible, Candace and Wendy is responsible, and so is Kierna is responsible. Notice that she left out Ashley's name. Notice that part. Notice how she left out Ashley's name. Ashley invited Deborah there for some bullshit. I don't care what Ashley explains it to be. She invited her there because she knew that that girl had a problem with Candace. She already knew that. She knew that already. And ain't nobody gonna tell me that she didn't know. She knew. That's why she invited her on that damn to that damn place because she knew that that girl had an issue with Candace. Off the rip. She already knew that. That's why she invited her. Because Ashley is messy like that. She do shit like that. She knew what it was given from the very beginning. So, girl, please. Like, get the fuck out of here. You really think that we're stupid? This was Ashley's fault as well as Deborah's fault. First of all, how the hell are you going to blame Candace when Candace wasn't bothering Deborah? Candace didn't do anything to Deborah. Deborah came over there fucking with that girl because she felt some type of way. And my thing is, Deborah ain't got no right to feel no type of way about anything Candace had to say about her because at the end of the day, Deborah had that lady husband name in her fucking mouth on multiple occasions. They are not responsible. Ashley responsible for inviting her ass to that damn um to that damn reunion. I mean to that damn show. And um Deborah's responsible for going over there fucking with that girl. Candace said now Karen was like, Can you please explain what you said, Candace? Because I don't want to quote you. Candace says that she was over there dancing, you know what I'm saying? And then that is when Deborah came over there saying that do they have anything to talk about? And so that's when um what's her name? That's when um Candace was like, No, we don't get this varmint out of my face. So then that's when Mia said, You can't do that. And then Candace says, Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You cannot tell me how to react when somebody comes at me. You cannot tell me how to react. And I just need for Mia to shut her mother mouth why are you even talking in this particular package you need to be the last one talking shut the hell up how you gonna tell her what she can't do in this predicament when she's the one that's being addressed she's the one being come you know what i'm saying like she's the one that's being addressed so how you gonna tell her what she can and can't do You y'all do y'all have selective amnesia or something like? Do y'all not remember the shit that y'all be doing? Like, what about you and how you responded when Wendy was going off on your ass when you start when you started with her? You started with Wendy. That's that's what I don't understand. You you assaulted somebody and you got so much to say about how somebody's supposed to act. It's the whole gaslighting thing for me. That's the part that I don't like. It's the gaslighting for me, like. What the fuck did you want Candace to say to that girl? She ain't had shit for her. So what, what, what did she need to say? 
she didn't want to talk to her deborah knew what the hell she came there on she came there to confront motherfuckers about the shit that was said on the show because she ain't on it and she wanted a moment that's what this was uh, and, uh, and again, this is the reason why I don't understand why Candace also give Ashley a damn pass too. Because a lot of y'all be sitting up here trying to um, trying to come for me when I call Candace out on her bullshit when it comes down to this Ashley shit. And she do be on bullshit when it comes down to this Ashley shit. Because at the end of the day, one minute she reading her down, then the next minute she want to be cool with her. Why the f*** you being cool with her? And she set this girl, she brought this girl here to confront you. Not to mention, when you got into the fight with Monique, you felt all kinds of ways about her writing that damn statement for Monique, making you look bad. You was mad about that too. So how the fuck are you able to be cool with her? I don't understand that. When she wrote that statement to help Monique's case, it was, fuck you, Ashley. Fuck you, Ashley. Fuck you, Ashley. It should have stayed fuck you, Ashley. After that. It should have stayed that way. But you be so quick to try to be cool with these motherfuckers. And that's the part that I don't understand. You bring up the colorism claims. You do this, you do that. But then you yearn to have a friendship or a relationship with the likes of a Robin or an Ashley. The same people that keep on showing you. That they're not your damn friends. And let me address something really quickly. Now, I was looking at Busy's video last night because he was talking about how the line keeps moving and so does the bloggers. Now, let me just say this because I'm not no hit dog and I ain't hollering, but I'm going to say this. Now, um, I have not always been Team Candace. Like, I'm really more so for the team of what's right and what's wrong. Now, when the whole colorism thing first came about during the fight, with Candace and Monique, I did not understand because I felt they were both brown skinned girls. So I didn't understand what people meant by colorism because when people was feeling like I was defending Monique, which I actually wasn't, they were calling me a colorist because I was like, you know, my because of my stance on the fight. My stance on the fight was Candace and Monique both was responsible. Each party played a part. One played more of a part than the other one. Like, I felt like it was um, the drag me Monique was a big excessive. Like, if you don't want to fight somebody, you don't challenge nobody to drag you. Because some people are dumb enough to, to drag you. Never underestimate your opponent. If I know I don't want to fight you, I'm not going to tell you to drag me. I'm not going to tell you to slap me. I'm not going to tell you to do any type of, I'm not going to challenge you to do any bodily harm to me when I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? And because she did that, Monique went on and decided to drag her like she wanted to in the first fucking place. Now, was it necessary? Absolutely not. But that's what happened. So when it came down to that situation, I didn't understand the colorism part when it came down to the fight with Candace and Monique. Now, I understand by that point, I understood what colorism was because of the whole OG and Evelyn thing. I definitely understood it. But the thing of it is... I didn't understand it when it came down to Candace and Monique because I'm like, both of them dark skin. So there's, 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 what, what are y'all talking about? I didn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? So then after Monique left the show and I started to really see, because I felt like Candace was supported most of the time. Like I saw Giselle and Robin supporting her. I saw Cherie supporting her. Like I felt that she was supported. And then, you know, as time went on, I did see how she does get blamed for things that really ain't her fault. Like with the Mia shit, the whole both of them throwing arugula at each other. Like they solely tried to blame that on Candace. And I felt some kind of way starting in season six because just last season, y'all went in on Monique about this fight and saying that you should always fight with your words and words should never make you want to get physical with nobody. But at this that very next reunion, Giselle looked at Candace and said, you said your mama to Mia. Now, if Mia were to slap you, then I'd be like, so that goes against what you just said a year ago. It goes against what the fuck you just said a year ago. So that's where the tides began to turn for me because I'm like, they only go based on who they like at that moment. It's not really... It's not, it's not necessarily what they really believe. 
it's based off of who they like at that moment. So that's why my tides began to turn because I would always say I'm indifferent to Candace. One minute I like Candace, the next minute Candace getting on my nerves. I would always say that I'm indifferent to her, always. Even during season five, that first half of season five, I defended Candace before that fight like it was nobody's business. You know what I'm saying? I defended her down. If you go back and watch the first half of season five, I did because I felt like Monique was fake as fuck to her that, that first half. But when it came out to that fight, I did feel like they both played a part in it, Monique more so. And people were upset about it. And that's, yeah, but I don't want to go relive season five all over again. But season six is where the tides began to turn when I saw Giselle say that to Candace at that reunion. You just said that we hold ourselves above the stereotypes. And in five minutes, Monique took it away when she struck Candace. But on the next reunion, you look at Candace and you tell her that because of her mouth and the shit that she said to Mia, if Mia wanted to pop Candace, she'll be like, So that means you don't stand by shit that you said. If you not for violence, don't be for it in any situation. And another thing, Candace, the predicament that Candace is in right now, trying to be friends with these motherfuckers, knowing that they not her friend. Monique dumbass was doing that same shit during season five. They fall for that trap every fucking time. They play y'all against each other. Y'all fall for it. And that's just what it is. And I called Monique out for that season five. But don't nobody remember that. It's dumb as fuck. Why y'all trying to be friends with these folks? Again, that's why Scotty can't be on reality TV. I can't fake the funk with nobody. Once I don't fuck with you, I don't. And that's a done deal. You better ask some of these folks around here. Um, let's see where we at with that. Um, I just feel like Ashley doesn't get any blame for this when she is the one that invited that girl there. So then Ashley says that Candace's mouth plays a part in some of this, some of these things that she's getting into. And I'm just like, here we go with the one-sided bullshit. Here we go with the bullshit. Okay. Is Candace mouth reckless as hell? Absolutely. It's reckless. Dwindling uterus. Bad witch. Where's your, in where's your income, roach? All that. Yes, her mouth is reckless. Karen's mouth reckless. Her mouth reckless too. But y'all not Ashley mouth reckless. Most of y'all got reckless mouths. So if y'all want to hold somebody accountable for the shit that comes out their fucking mouth, hold each other accountable for that. Karen's not the only one that say crazy shit. When Karen said that Giselle had a fiery box, that was a lot. But we ain't talking about that, though. We're just going to stick on Candace and her, and her wide-ass mouth. We're going to stick on it. Again, the line keeps on moving. This is the reason why I kind of, the tides for me began to turn around season six. Then, not to mention, Ashley going to say, um, Necker says, Necker also says that Ashley's words play a part. You need to shut the fuck up because you don't know that girl like that. Um... Then Ashley says that she didn't invite Deborah to be messy, but Deborah also wanted to clear the air. I wouldn't give a damn what air she wanted to clear. There's no air to clear. If she wanted to talk to Candy, she could have did that shit off camera. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand that. Please get the fuck out of here. You knew exactly what the hell you were doing when you invited her to this damn event. You knew she had smoke for Candace, and that's why you invited her ass, period. You could sit up here and act like you didn't know or you didn't know she was going to act the way that she did all the fuck you want to. You knew. 
period. You knew that. Um, Ashley then apologizes to Kiana. Then Kiana knows she tickled me when she clocked the shit out of Ashley. She said that Ashley is the queen of aftermath apologies. And Ashley was like, you know, um, why is it called an aftermath apology? Like I said, I was sorry about the whole thing. And then Kiana said, well, at the end of the day, I think that you get off scot-free with the drama that you cause and stuff like that. But that's just my opinion. And so I'm like, that was like an aftermath apology. Because why are you apologizing to me now? Where was the apology when it was needed? Nah, Erica, I can't get with that. I can't. You want to know why? Because people criticize Monique for doing the same thing with Giselle. So we're not going to make excuses for Candace either. They're bo they both look stupid being cool with people that's done things to harm them. Sorry. It's, if it's not okay for Monique to sit up here and trying to sit here and have afternoon lunches with Giselle and, and talk about moving forward and shit like that. It's not cute for Candace to do the same thing with Ashley. When Ashley keeps on showing her that she ain't her friend and she don't give a fuck about her. I can't get with that logic. It's not okay for now one of them to do that. It's stupid as hell for both of them to do that, to be honest. I'm just being real with y'all. It ain't no moving on. It's too much. Okay, let me go back down to my notes. Okay. Kiana gives her love to Karen. And then, you know, Kiana thanks all of the girls. But this is a part um, of this fight that I did not um, actually talk about on this review. So I'm going to talk about it now. The part where Candace, after Candace was blamed for the whole thing, um... Candace looked at that couch and says, I know that y'all are not going to fight for me. I know that. So I'm on my own. I felt so bad for her. Honestly. She knows that she's not safe. She knows that she really ain't got nobody to have her back. And to me, that means you talking about Wendy, you talking about Kay, you talking about Ashley, you don't trust nobody on this show at this point. So you don't think none of these motherfuckers got your back. At all. And I really, I would hate to be in that predicament where I don't think that anybody has my back. You know, that's that's a sucky position to be in. Like, when you're in a group of people and you feel like you all by yourself, like, that. that's, that's a fucked up ass feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a fucked up feeling to feel like you're by yourself in any situation, especially like that, when you feel like you are, your back is against the wall. But I'm going to get more into that when we get to the end. Um, this last part was Robin says she has no hate nor animosity for Candace. Candace feels the same way. Um, I don't think they're going to ever be friends, though. Some shit would never be the same. Like, I feel like you can move forward with people, but y'all, the friendship won't be the same. Like, either y'all going to be able to um move forward and be cordial or be you know in a in a good space but being friends again the way that y'all used to be because there's so much that has happened it's probably never going to be it and i find myself struggling with that shit too sometimes like sometimes when people do shit to you or you know um y'all have a falling out and you know things become bigger than what they are and it blows up and it becomes public and it wasn't even supposed to be that or whatever it, it, it it's it's hard to you know come back from certain things it is it's hard to come back from certain things and i am the king of holding grudges and i'm in a place where i'm trying not to hold no more but when i when you experience so much weird shit from people 
that you did nothing but support, that you've done nothing but be a good friend to, that you've done nothing but try to be there in the best capacity that you know how because you got your own demons that you're trying to fight and they show you that they don't mean shit to you or you don't mean shit to them or the friendship was never anything to them. Once you make up in your mind that they, that they not shit to you, they would they will forever not be shit to you. Now, sometimes we could we could have a conversation and we can move forward, but it would never be the same. I've seen it happen twice to me over this last year. Like it's never, it's it's we're good, but it ain't gonna be the same. You know what I'm saying? Like some things are just irreparable. It'll never be the way that it once was. And that's and that sucks, but that's that's life, and that's the way it goes. Wendy and Neca, they discuss their situation. They ain't going to never be friends. They could just be cordial. That's another situation that is never going to go nowhere. Um, Candace and Giselle, they can't move forward. And we know they can't. Candace hates Giselle. Giselle hates Candace. I mean, they're never, ever going to move forward. And Karen is still defense. Now, these are my closing remarks on this whole season now. Somebody asked me, they just wonder why Kiana didn't press charges. Well, some people don't press charges in fights. I'm just being honest. Some people don't press charges in fights. Some people fight, they move on. Then there are some people that fight, they press charges. When Bendo got in his fight a couple of months ago, he didn't press charges. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I don't, like, I haven't been in no fight in over a decade, and I didn't press nobody's charges. You know what I mean? Because I, because in my eyes, where I'm from, a fight is a fight. We fought, and it's over with. You know, that's that's just how we operate. We fought. We ain't got to get the law into it. We fought. You won. I lost. Or I lost. Or, no, or I won. You lost. Or it was a draw. We can move on. We didn't fought. Let's move on. You know what I'm saying? So... Some people don't press charges in fights. You know what I'm saying? Um, me personally, if I got hit with a deadly weapon like Kiana did, I probably would have pressed charges. See, when it gets to the point where you're trying, where you're trying to hurt me physically, like you hit me in the face with bottles, or you're trying to bite me and shit like that, charges, charges, charges. This is my money maker. My face is what carries me on this YouTube shit. Charges. You want to hit me in the head with about charges? You want to bite my face? Charges. You want to knock my um my teeth out my mouth that I paid for? Charges. Charges. Period. Charges. I got it busted lip charges. If it's just a regular fight and it wasn't that and it wasn't that bad, we can move on. But the moment I see anything fucked up about my face, charges. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, that's how I that's what I think about it. Um NECA. You know, I'm normally the type of person that be like. You know, give her a second season, see how she turns out next season. You feel what I'm saying? I normally be the guy to say that, but NECA really didn't make no impact. It was nothing that she did that made an impact at all. I do know that Drew Sedora, a lot of folks did not like Drew when she first came on. And um, they winded up liking her the second season. But some people still don't like Drew. I love Drew now. But, you know, I felt like maybe she could have the Drew Sedora effect and come back next season. But, nah, go. Um... Let's see. What else? Ashley, she needs to go. She ain't bringing nothing. She ain't doing nothing. Um, I don't be more believe that her and Michael getting a divorce than the man in the moon. I just don't believe it. She lying to some of us. Like, I just don't believe it. Um, but she needs to go. Her time has run out. She been ran out. It's over with for her. Leave. Go. Um, Candace. As far as she goes, I understand why she left. Um, 
watching this reunion, I feel like she made that the made the right decision to leave because no matter what, she was going to be blamed for everything anyway. And as of today, I you know I know that she got like you no know, news that she just reported, where that she just put out there. So that may be another reason why she decided, okay, this shit ain't for me. I ain't gonna do this shit no more. That's how that's how it feels. Um, who else? What we got next? Um, Karen. Karen needs to take accountability for her drunk driving next season if she comes back. That needs to be the thing. She needs to take accountability because all these excuses that she made in her in her um what is it in her statement. Absolutely not. That's not going to cut it for me. You got to take accountability for putting yourself and others in danger because you would decide to drink like you ain't got no damn sense. Robin, glad she's gone. Um, I won't miss her. I'm glad that she's gone. I've been waiting for her to leave for a long time. And uh, yeah, bye. Um, am I forgetting somebody? Mia. Mia lies. I don't really believe nothing that comes out of her damn mouth. And um, I really don't know where to go with Mia at this point. Um, they're setting her up to be the next face of this show is what it looks like to me. But, yeah. Um, Wendy. I need more from Wendy if she comes back. I need to know more about her family life. I wish we knew why um, Eddie's wife, Eddie's mom, or her or his family, um, however, don't like Wendy. I would love to know more about that. Um, but we need more from her. Giselle, bro, Giselle needs to be held accountable. She needs to stop being protected. Monica already talked about how she got protected at the season five reunion. She had a whole breakdown and they didn't even show it. The same way Ashley said that she had a hard time at the reunion, but we barely seen it. Y'all protecting some of these girls. And it's apparent they were saying that same shit about Housewives of Atlanta, saying that Eric was protecting them girls, protecting Sheree, protecting Marlo, leaving Candy and Kenya out the dry. So that's what I believe. Um, as far as the season goes, I give it an F. It was terrible. There was really no good parts. It was not enjoyable to watch. It just wasn't good. I wasn't. I wasn't feeling it. Like it, they got to come back. Like I'm. I'm. I'm glad that they. Um, that they've decided to clean house a little bit, and all that. But they got to. They really got to come together and get this shit together because if the cast, if we lost Candace and Robin and Necker, those are three people, and the only people that we got left is Wendy, Karen, Giselle, Mia, and Ashley. Them the five that's left right now. They got to do some. You bring Kiana in as a full time flute holder and bring in probably maybe two more people, and then you got to reboot. I don't want Sharice. I don't know why y'all keep forcing her on us. We don't need her. We don't want her. Stop bringing her back. Period. I don't want her back. I don't want to see her. She does not do anything for me. She can have as many connections as she got or won't, but no. Um. So one of them girls from Love and Marriage DC maybe could do the show. I mean, I will. I want to see Ashley Silva on this show. Honestly, I would love to see Ashley Silva on the show. She'll be the one to get Giselle ass together, in my opinion. But you know, a lot of folks don't like Ashley. You know, with her mean ass. But uh, yeah, that's about. That's really all that I got for the Housewives of Potomac. Now, one more thing before I go, because I know a lot of y'all. Um, that's up in here. Watch my LAMH videos. Now, for those of you that saw my community wall post, me, JoJo, and Mims hung out together Friday night. We went out to dinner or whatever. And we were just talking, and Mims said to me, I know you said that um you don't want to do Love and Mary Chansville anymore, but I feel like you should. Um, look at it as a business. 
you know, um, that's one of your highest rated videos. Um, whether the people hate you or not, they still watch. So I think that you should do LAMH again. I don't know. I'm still because I I get what Mims is saying. I'm taking heed to everything that he's saying. I just don't like to go back on what I said because I was very adamant about not doing it. But then it was just like, you know, Mims got a point and I really ain't got shit else to review no more at this point. So why not do it? But I don't know. I'm still going back and forth about it. Um, I don't know. But I do know that um Roaster Review is coming back, but we not doing it on LAMH, though. We refuse to do it on there, but I I don't know. I'm just really not. I don't know. I'm not. And plus, I ain't got nothing. Like I said, I ain't got nothing else to review after this. So it's just like, should I go against what I said and go back and do it? I don't mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's not. I don't know. I see uh, Two Feist is saying no, but you know, a lot of people keep on saying we want your reviews, we want your reviews, we want your reviews, we want your reviews. So I don't know. It is what it is. But anyway, um, I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here, y'all. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my um my Potomac reviews. I really do hope so. Um, and that's about it. So um I hope you guys wished Jojo a happy birthday. We turned the fuck up for his birthday. Um we turned we turned up for his birthday. We really did. We turned all the way up for his birthday. Every time I go up there, um we turn up and I be tired by the time I get home every single time. But um, JoJo had a great birthday. Really, B showed up. We had a great time um, or whatever. So, yeah, my boy had a great, great birthday. And um, JoJo is actually coming back to YouTube. He has a lot coming up. He got like six videos that's ready to be released. So when he come back, I hope you guys support him and everything that he got going on and things like that. So, um. Yeah, so that's pretty much where we're going with this. Um, we got a lot of deep dives coming this week um, because there's nothing else to really talk about right now because I have given up on Love & Hip Hop. I'm probably never reviewing that again, for real, for real. So I don't know. That's another reason why we were looking at LAMH because he talked to me and I'm just like, I don't know, child. I really don't know. But anyway, y'all, that's about it. So we're about to go ahead and get up out of here. We had over 600 people in the chat today. I appreciate you guys and all of your support. And I love you guys. And shout out to all of the new subscribers that have hit that subscribe button. I'm glad that you guys are loving the content and everything like that. I hope you guys are feeling it. Um, That's about it. So before we go... um. What's Cowboy? Is that um Beyonce's new album? Because if it is, I haven't even listened to that album, honestly. I'm not even interested, to be honest. I ain't listened to it. But uh, there will be some Housewives deep dives. There will be some musical deep dives. And um, Boss Babe Awards is next week. So probably after Boss Babe, I could really, really get Who Was Wrong off the ground and Young Fresh She Knew Too. Because all this traveling and shit, I don't have a day off. So, um, Boss Babe is next weekend. Wish me luck on that. Um, after Boss Babe is over, I can get really get with these people for Who Was Wrong 3 and Young Fresh and New 2. And then we can get that out the way and have that start premiering in the summertime sometime. And then we can finally, finally, finally get into the jukebox that Cherise and Ranting with Ricardo and Feisty is putting it together as a collective so we can finally get into the jukebox. It's just been so much going on. Girl, I travel too much. Like, I'm going to sit the fuck down for a while after the Boss Baby Wars is over. Woo! But anyway, um, <laughs> let's get into um what we got, these promotions. First things first, the Chasing Panel airs on Thursday night, honey. 
Um, it comes on right at the Chase in Dallas. So make sure you guys tune in for myself, for Jamar, for Carl, for Tramiel, for T, for Jeremy. And then, of course, now we'll be having Bando come in as a special guest from time to time. And it seems like y'all kind of enjoy his input. So, you know, um, he'll be coming in here and there, you know, from time to time. So um, shout out to him. Um, also, I wish I had the link to give to Feisty and them in the um, mod chat. I forgot to give it to him. But if you haven't already, go ahead and pre-order Tramel's new single um, called The Everything Remix featuring Rico with a K. It's available for pre-order right now. So make sure you guys support and pick it up. Um, the video was already filmed. I was there, of course. So make sure you guys support him. Um, Carl, his stage name is K Star. He has a brand new single out right now called Cock Goblin. Okay, so make sure you guys support it in purchase. And last but certainly not least, Bando has a new record out called The Nasty Remix, and it is available now, and it features Tay G, Alana the Blonde, as well as The Hood Hoes. Okay, make sure you guys support it because it's already number 10 on my replay list for 2024. But, um... Make sure you guys support all three of them. They are independent artists. They all are near and dear to me. Two of them being my best friends and one of them being, you know, the person that got me singing. Angel of mine. <laughs> anyway, with that being said, you guys, this is your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below. With that being said, you guys, I am out of here. Um, I got one more video to do for you guys, and that's about Candace and her pregnancy. And then if nothing else comes up, the next time y'all will see me today is for the panel, which will be on Sakina's page. I will be sharing their links shortly after this video is done. I'm gone, y'all, and I will leave you guys with the promo from King Darius Books, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. What's up, everyone? It is Darius asking you to check out my newest children's book, DJ Stands on Business. Follow along as five friends who are entrepreneurs by the name of Pixel, Raven, a dynamic duo we can learn, and a children's book author named DJ use their entrepreneurial spirit to save money to go on a trip to Mexico. So follow along as children can learn about terms that teach them about entrepreneurship and give them the opportunity to open up the world in the adventures of friendship, and entrepreneurship. You can check out my children's book, DJ Stands on Business, as well as DJ's favorite day and Twinkle Little Star at www.kingdariusbooks.com.